fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early days of the western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. His strength and courage were always on the side of right against might, and it was his daring and resourcefulness that finally made possible the winning of the West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver, the Lone Ranger... Rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for the Rio Grande! Hello, Silver! Away! Among the many employees of the great Crawford Ranch near the border was Pablo Vegas. He and his wife, Maria, occupied a small shack. And one night, as Pablo returned home at the end of the day's work, he opened the door to find Maria struggling to hold back her sobs. Madre de Dios. Maria, what is it? What has happened? Is that that you are ill, yes? You feel the pain. Oh, Pablo. Oh, there, there, my little one. It is nothing. Nothing can harm you. I am your husband. I, I will not permit it. I'm sorry. Why do you cry? It, it was just... See? Oh, Pablo, while you were gone, and I sat here sewing. I, I could not help thinking how poor we are and how terribly hard you must work all the day long. And... <laughs> oh, you are the foolish one. But I can't... You help. think that your Pablo is afraid to work, yes? Oh, no. Or I... that I have no strength? I know you're strong. Or is it... Or is it, Maria, that you have permitted yourself to think of other days? The days when we lived in our own country to the south, when whatever we wanted, it was ours for the asking. Was it of that thought, my Maria? See? Si. Oh, you must not. It is not good. Oh, Pablo, how am I to help it? You are unhappy with me? Oh, no, no. Then let us resign ourselves. Let us put thoughts of our home out of our mind. Let us be contented where we are. But the Senor Crawford... He is cruel to you, Pablo. Oh, I... oh, you cannot deny I have seen. He has struck you. That I've seen with my own eyes. Oh, Pablo, we are poor. Yes, and perhaps we shall never be able to return to our country again. But must we stay here? Cannot we leave? We have no money. Oh, and I... without dinero, where is one to go? I always want to leave without horses or saddle. And who but the Senor Crawford would give me work and not ask questions, eh? Ah, oh, he's a beast. Oh, it is so. I hate him. And I, Maria. Then we must leave. We must. Oh, no, no, it is not possible. We. Someone comes. Who is it? I do not know. Maria. Maria, dry your tears. Oh, see. Si. Come. 
Dios. Diablo, what? You Pablo Vegas? Si, sí, senor. But then I... don't be alarmed. I'm here as your friend. Senor, only honest men are our friends. I come... And honest men do not wear masks. Maria, oh, sh- oh, but Pablo, I do not trust you. You're right, senora. Of course. Honest men do not wear masks. But there are exceptions. I'm not speaking of myself. I'm speaking of a masked man you've met and called your friend many times. You mean... The black caballero. <gasps> you know him, senor. I come from him, Pablo. You, you speak the truth. This is not a trick, senor. It isn't. I do speak the truth. Then... Then you must have brought us a message, see? I have. And? Pablo, the black caballero would have brought you the message himself, if possible. But he could not. He had other work to do. He's on a mission for your government. So important that it couldn't be neglected. So important, in fact, that Tato, a friend of mine, is giving him help. I rode here alone. And the message? You can return to your home whenever you like. Oh, Amigo! It has been proved that none of your family was ever guilty of treason. Your lands have been restored. All charges against you have been forgotten. You you hear what he says, Maria? Maria, do you hear? Oh, see, si, Pablo, see. Si. I'd advise returning as soon as you can. You may doubt my word, but once across the border, you'll not be long in learning that I have told you only the truth. Oh, senor, forgive me for what I said. Certainly. And amigo. Yes? My thanks. A thousand times. Pablo, I did nothing but bring you the news. Your gratitude you owe to just one man, the black caballero. Steady. <laughs> Silver, we're not going far. What I've heard about Crawford is true. Pablo may run into trouble when he attempts to leave. You and I will keep an eye on things, old boy. Come on, Silver. I on, Silver. Away! That same evening, Pablo Vegas went to Crawford. The ranch owner scowled as he learned of the Mexican's determination to leave. Then he pounded the table with his fist. Hey, something you can't do it. Oh, Shut up. You want your wages, eh? Si, senor. You know how much you got coming? Oh, si. Maria and I, we have figured it, senor. I've worked for you for nearly a year. I've drawn only such money as has been necessary. In the money of your country, senor, $200 are due me. Is that not correct? Correct. <laughs> that by a long Saturday. What I... Just a second. Let me show you something. And where'd I put them accounts? Had them right here. Oh, yeah. Here they are. Know what these are, young fella? No. <laughs> you are, too. Your name's on every one of them where you signed them. Needn't think I didn't keep track. These are what you signed every time you bought supplies. I do not understand. Hey. Mean to claim you didn't sign these slips? Oh, no, no, senor. I remember it well, but, but they have been taken into account. Even with those, senor, it is $200 that you owe me. Yeah, I reckon been... you don't know how to add. Listen to this. Grab your butt the first month you was here. $20. And that's the lowest. The grub you bought since then come to more. What I can... And here. This is for some calico your wife bought. $10. Here's another for some boots you got. Here's one for some work clothes. Another for some lumber to fix up your cabin. What, senor? Hold on a second. I'll give you the total. Let me see. Here it is. Here's what you owed me up to the first of the month. But, of course, that ain't the whole thing. There's been more since. Yeah, see? Yep, that's up all right. Young fella, allowing for your wages and everything... You owe me $500.29. Sucker. And if you've got some fool notion that you're pulling stakes before you work that out, you're loco. Try it and I'll have you jailed. Nobody can cheat me. What? What? That cannot be. You saying I'm lying? Senor, we, we have bought these things from you. Yes, I, I do not deny. But, but when I ask you the price, you tell me you charge only what one would have to pay in town. But now you say what that you I was... You, do, you get kind of a short memory. Sure, I said my prices were just the same as you'd pay in town. Plus charges for freighting them supplies out here to the ranch. It is a trick. Ain't no such thing. I got a lot of folks working for me. If I keep a stock of supplies for sale here in my place, it's just to save them trouble. You ought to be grateful. It ain't my fault if you spent more than you earned. The, the orders, 
Is it that they owe you also, senor? Well, to tell the truth, Pablo, I reckon if I was to go over all these accounts, I'd find out they did. You folks are all the same. Money don't mean a thing to you till after it's spent. And they too must work until you have been repaid, yes? Sure. I ain't got no, no other way of getting my money back. This is the law? I told you I'd have you jail if you tried to skip, didn't I? You bet it's the law. Then it is not fair. You're one big cheat, senor. I will not pay. That means you're skipping out? Senor, I have said what I have said. I will not pay. Roof! Yeah, boss? Come here. Huh? You see that hombre just went out? Sure. <laughs> that Vegas gent, wasn't it? Sounded like he didn't take to your little game. He wants to quit. So I heard. Well, you watch him, Savvy. And if he tries to sneak? You let me know. I'll make him wish he'd never been born. Pablo, what is it? You're angry. The pig. What has happened? He's a cheat. He will not pay me. He say, I, Pablo, owe him money. He said, I must stay and work until it is paid. Oh, he lies. We owe him nothing. Uh, you think I do not know it. But, Pablo, si. if the Senor Crawford does not pay you, if we have no money, how will we leave? How will we cross the border? He will not stop us. Do you have a plan? See, si. pack what we have. Tonight, when he sleeps, we go. <laughs> Just before dawn, Ruth pounded at the door of the ranch house. Boss! Hey, boss, wake up! Wake up! Let me in! What the... Hey, you get kicked by a horse? That low-down horse thief? What's that? He got away. He stole two horses from the corral and him and his wife vamoosed. Who did? Who do you think? That Pablo hombre, of course. Hey, why didn't you stop him? You think I got this here lump on my head by giving him a hand? He did that? Hit me so doggone hard, I seen a million stars. Then he's gone. How big a start they got? Not over five minutes. Which way to go? South, towards the border. Are you able to ride? If I have to. Then saddle up. Saddle the horse for me and rouse up the boys. I'll be with you quick as I get my boots on. We're going after him? Yeah. And when we catch him, we're stringing that mix to the first tree we can find. Now get going. Right. Pete! Lem! Idaho! Wake up, you hombres! Wake up and rattle, you sidewinders! We're right! small camp not far away, the Lone Ranger was saddling the great horse Silver. He stopped for a moment at the sound of Maria's scream. Then he quickly tightened the cinches. Silver, old fellow, that sound of his old trouble had come before we expected it. Steady, boy. Nah. All right, old boy. <laughs> Let's go. Hello, Silver. Hooray! The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. While Maria bent over her husband, the men led by Crawford surrounded them and... There's nothing, Maria. The wound, it does not matter. Your arm, Maria. I will stand up. Oh, but no, you must not. You Your must... arm. Oh, see. Oh, you said you could get away, eh? Senor, if the horse had rode and not thrown me, by now we would have been across the board. <laughs> yeah, but you, but you ain't. It's a lot of good that does you. I suppose you've got sense enough to say what kind of a fix you've got yourself in by trying this stuff, don't you? See, see. It's bad enough. Yes, you light now to owe me cash. But you had to steal a couple of horses in the bargain. Now, what happens to horse thieves in this part of the country, Pablo? Senor, your horses, they were not stolen. Once Maria and I had reached the place of safety, they would have been returned. You expect me to believe that? I speak the truth, You senor. mean you lie? If you expect me to swallow any such story, you're a bigger idiot than I took you for. Roof! Yeah? Come here and bring your rope. Idaho, keep this coyote covered. It makes a break drilling. I cannot escape, senor. Lucky for you, you got sense enough to know it. Here you are, boss. Good. Well, what is it you do? <laughs> Try guessing. Roof, make a... Make a noose out of one end and throw the other over that bread, sir. <laughs> sure. No, no, you cannot. You cannot hang my Pablo. I will not permit it. Oh, stand stop back. No, Quiet, please. Maria. It is no use. Senor. <laughs> well? You, you can do with me what you will, but first I ask of you one small favor. A favor? What do you mean? Well, when I have been punished... Permit my Maria to depart unharmed. Eh? She is but a woman. I alone am to blame. Permit her to cross the border. I ask nothing else. Missy, you ain't in a place where you can give orders or ask favors either one. You got that ready, Roof? All set, boss. Oh, but, senor, I beg Shut you. Up. Please... Roof, put that rope round this poor cat's neck and heist him into the saddle. Right. Oh, come, come on, on here. One here, slap don't this woman and keep her back. She's worse than a wildcat. Come on, you. Oh, Captain, <laughs> why let you go? Now, up with the skunk. What the? The rope. The rope shot in two. Rich. Every one of you reach for the sky. It's a mass man. A mass man, eh? I'll get him there. My hand it. And ten more shots here. The next man to slap leather gets the same. Pablo. Yes, amigo, yes. You're safe, Pablo. I am Shoot safe. two horses. Bring them here. Then come with me. <laughs> While Crawford and his men looked on helplessly, Pablo and his wife made their escape in the company of the masked man. The Lone Ranger took a roundabout course to hide their trail and finally reached his well-hidden camp. Oh, oh, there's Silver. Oh, 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 oh. oh. This mount, he will be safe here. Oh, amigo, if it had not been for you, my Never Pablo... Never mind that. Pablo, listen to me. Yeah. Speak, amigo. I know that you're anxious to return to your home in the south. But you've seen just what kind of man Crawford is. You know the game he's working. And you aren't his only victim. He employs many men and women of your race. He's playing the same game on them. That is so. He employs them, forces them to buy their supplies from him, and charges them several times what those supplies are worth. See? Because he doesn't ask payment in cash, but offers to take it from their wages, they don't realize what they're being charged until too late. Amigo, the senor Crawford said that I owe him more than $500. It cannot be so. Unfortunately, he's entitled to charge whatever he wishes. Each time you purchase supplies, you sign the slip acknowledging the purchase. Even though it's morally dishonest, as long as he holds those slips to prove your obligations, you're legally indebted to him. It is not fair. Certainly it isn't. That means that the people of your race who work for him are a little better than slaves. I do not they know. They can't I... leave him while they're in his debt. And they'll never get out of debt while he can help it. He'll see to that. And, amigo, there is but one thing to do. Yes? I will take a gun, amigo. I will hunt him out. No, and I... Pablo, that's not the way. But what Murder is... Murder never solves anything. But if you will, you can help. I will do anything, senor. As I said, Crawford employs many people of your race. See, si. Are they your friends? If you suggested a plan to free them, would they do as you say? Oh, they would, senor. My Pablo is well liked. You, you have a plan, yes? Pablo, while Crawford holds those slips you and your friends have signed... You were in his power. Yes. But if they were destroyed... We will steal them? No. Well, then how That, could... too, would mean stepping outside the law. But if, on the other hand, Crawford himself destroyed them, and willingly... Oh, it is impossible. You think so? He would not be so great a fool. Hear what I have in mind, Pablo. Then decide for yourself. <laughs> Crawford 
Crawford had not willingly admitted defeat and had led his gun hands in a search for Pablo and his wife. Unsuccessful, however, he had returned to his ranch and that evening discussed the masked man's interference with Ruth. Ruth, you savvy what this means if something like this should ever happen again? I got a good notion. It means half the breeds I got working here will be trying the same thing. Once they see somebody getting away with it, they'll be lighting out too. Yeah, gun it, I've been having enough trouble with them. So I noticed. Yeah. You heard anything? Well, they've been acting kind of funny. Oh. All loafing on the job as much as they can and acting like it'd please them something special to start something. If they do, I'll have them shut down. There's a side of them. I can handle the fools. Oh, sure. Reckon you can. All I mean is you'd better be careful. Anyhow, for now. Yeah. Well, just today, they've been worse than ever. How do you mean? I was down by the shacks this evening. Yeah? It was all bunched together, jabbering away like 60. But when they seen me coming along, they shut up like they forgot how to talk. Uh, they did, did they? And I ain't too proud to admit I was plenty glad when I got out of sight again. Wouldn't have surprised me none at all if one of them gone local and tried some fancy knife work. You think they're hatching something up? I don't know. All I know is what I told you. Now, yeah, wait. Yeah. Listen. What in thunder? Of course, that's them now. What in thunder do they think they're doing? They sound plenty mad to me. Hello, Pete. Watch out! Hey! Boss, you could have been hit. Get back inside. Bar the door. What's it mean? Boss, it looks to me like they've had enough. Where's the rest of our men? Likely locked in the bunkhouse. I... And, boss? Yeah? We'd better put out the lamps and get out of sight. If I ever seen a crowd bent on lynching, that's it. <laughs> While Crawford and Ruth hastily put out all lights and barricaded the doors and windows, the crowd outside yelled for revenge. All the resentment against Crawford had come to a head, and it seemed that nothing would satisfy the mob but action. But strangely enough, although many carried guns, few shots were fired, and the mob held back from storming the house. Ruth and his employer watched from behind a barricaded window and... Boss, what will we do? How are we going to get out of this? I'll have a law of them. Yeah? That's a swell idea. And just how do you figure to do that? Well, I'll have the law on them when we get out of here. Which maybe we won't do alive. You mean you think they'll... What's it look like? They look like they're paying a friendly call? Skunks. Well, you've been playing with fire. I've told you that before. You can't trick folks all the time and expect them to stand for it. Not even breeds. Hey, look there. What is it? That masked man again. Boss, he's their leader. Give me your gun. What are you going to do? Let him have it. Oh, no, you I don't. tell you, I'm That's gonna... just about all they'd need to set him off. One shot from us. We don't use no arms till we have to. If there was just some way to get word of the sheriff. Well, there ain't. But if there was, it'd ah, be... Maybe it'd save us, sure. But we can't, so what's the use of talking about it? Uh, wait a second. Hey. They've quieted down. The masked man's saying something. Can you hear what it is? Can't hear a thing. Then come on. There's a busted window over here. I want to know what that hombre's scheming. Listen to me, men. There's no need to rush the house. That would just mean fighting and men wounded. They can't escape. And they can't light a signal fire to bring help from town. Be patient, men. Sooner or later, they'll have to surrender. Then you can do with them as you please. Hear that? You bet I did. It looks like we're done for. Oh, that ain't what I meant. Did you hear what the masked man said? Huh? He told us what we can do. Sounded more to me like he was saying what we couldn't do. There's a can of kerosene over in the corner. Go get it. What do you mean? You hear me? Go get it. Sure, boss. Sure. Hurry it up. Just a second. Here you are. What are you going to do? Bring help from town. Huh? Start sprinkling that kerosene over the floor. I don't... Hey... You mean you're going to set this place afire? That's just what I mean. But you can't do. Ain't that a sight better than getting lynched? Think I'd give a hoot for this place when I got a chance to save my life? But, but after you set it afire, then what? They won't be expecting it. It'll take them a minute before they'll settle what's up. That's all the time we'll need. We'll make a break for the smokehouse. And if we can't hold them off from there till somebody rides out from town, then I'm clean loco. Boss, I think it'll work. We'll make it work. <laughs> well, what's funny? I was just thinking, boss. Hey. <laughs> the masked man's out to get us. But it was him that showed us how to bring help. <laughs> well, it ain't here yet. And it won't be if you don't get busy. The 
crowd outside, waiting tensely, could not suppress cries of excitement when flames burst from the windows of the ranch house. A moment later, the rear door opened, and two men raced for the security of an outbuilding. Only the Lone Ranger, seated astride his powerful white stallion, showed no surprise. Instead, he spoke a low command to his horse and followed in pursuit. There they go, old boy. After them. Come on, Silver. Watch yourselves. Stand aside. Come on, old fellow. It's the last man. Get back. Get back. Hold on there. Hold up, brother. Stop where you are. Drop those guns. I want you. Take it. Oh, hold it, Silver. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, you won't get me. Stop. Just try and get me. Here, boy. Get it. Get it. Get it. Now, look over there. There are the men you thought were after your lives. I've disarmed Roof and roped you. They're both at their mercy. And yet they have made one move to harm you. Hey, don't savvy. They never meant to harm you. That ain't so. They was going to lynch us. If they were, why don't they now? Well, uh... No. They don't mean to harm you. And Crawford, what? you can't harm them. Sure your ranch they... house is ablaze. It'll burn to the ground. And with it, every record that could prove that those men are in your debt. What do you say? What's more, you burn those records of your own accord. That ain't so. I'll make plenty of trouble for them. I'll Quiet. Get... But I tell the you... The sheriff I... will see the fire and soon be here. You can tell them whatever you want. But if I were you, uh... I'd make no complaint. You can prove nothing. And if you do complain... Well... You might find it a mistake. There's always a next time, Crawford... And next time, you might not get off so easily. Remember. Come on, Silver. Wait, come back here. Hello, Silver. Away! Uh, no use yelling, boss. He's gone. That coyote. And you know something? What are you talking about? We're keeping still. We're telling the sheriff nothing. Because if we talk too much, uh. maybe that masked gent will come back. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. (laughs) 